Hello guys, welcome, it's Terry from Smooth Watch Up here coming at you with an inbox review of a kit that I hope to do a video build series on this year. It is <clears throat> the 124 scale Ravel Level 4 kit of the Porsche 911 Turbo, uh, which is quite commonly referred to as a whale tail uh, due to its large uh, rear spoiler. So as I say, the kit's in 124 scale, it's got a total of 86 parts. And when it's built up, it has an overall body length of just 18 centimetres. So I'm not normally a car builder. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. Reason I've got this in is, as you may know, I do a lot of electricity. Uh, so I'm going to try and light this kit up. So what I'm going to go through at the moment is the, the inbox review of the kit. What you find in the box, what parts are inside, and a little bit of information on, on the kit itself. So the kit number is part 07179. It first came out in 1986. Um, and it's went through a few reboxings. Um... I'm trying to remember now that it was actually brought out by another company. Um, I'm just checking up there. On Skillmates is a great place to go. Uh, Fujimi actually brought it out. Um, a few, they did a wee bit of new tool and new parts and, and stuff like that. But uh, Ravel came out with the, the original one. Um, and it's remained basically unchanged until about 1988. And they put some new parts in it. Then they reboxed it with new decals in 2014, and this is a 2017 uh, rebox, basically, of uh, what is a, a 1980s kit, 1986 kit. So that's a little bit of history about the kit. Um, it is currently available. Um, it's not an expensive kit. It comes in around about £20 UK, which is not bad. Now, <laughs> uh, as I say, I don't usually do cars, but I didn't quite realise quite how small these 124 cars are uh, until I uh, started pulling things out of the box. So a little bit of side box art. Um, it's just a, a picture of the car. Um, so there you go. And on the other side, it's the same box art. Tells you how many parts. Uh, as we say, it's a level 4 kit. Uh, nothing much on that side. Same on that side. On the back, there is some uh, nice detail of a completed model kit there. Um, good thing is, it appears that the, the tailgate lifts up and there's some engine detail in it. So it's not a curbside, so you do have a, a, an engine uh, within the kit. Uh, there's a traditional whale tail, uh, the big rear spoiler. And a reasonably nice looking interior, albeit a bit German grey. Um, so it does list all the colour callouts on the back. And traditional Ravel Humbro colours. Mm, yeah, I won't be using those. So let's have a look at the box. Now, as usual, with Ravel, it's an end opening box, which is a total pain in the backside. So let's just pull out what's all what all you get inside. Now I have had a bit of a sneak preview. So let's just tip all this out. What all have we got in here? Oh, destructions. Yeah, so that's... I'll put the box away at the side. So what have we got? We've got colour instructions. We have some decals. Um, now, they say they're printed in Italy. So there's a good chance that these are cartograph decals. Uh, I can neither confirm nor deny, but normally saying if it's a Ravel kit and it says printed in Italy, they're usually cartograph. So... Um, I was actually wondering about some of this, um, the, the, the the painting of some of the parts. That looks like that's a decal for uh, the part, the plastic trim in front of the wheel arch. Uh, obviously the big Porsche logo. Individual dials for the dash, which is quite good because I'm thinking about trying to light the dash up even though it's tiny. Uh, various different uh, registration plates. And that's about it. A few logos uh, and things like that. So I'm going to be uh, building this out of the box with, with the parts supplied with the kit. So I'm not going to be putting any detail up in this. Uh, what's this? This is a little safety advice. The usual usual nonsense that you get inside. Yes, don't, don't stick things to your face and stuff like that. So that's that bit. 
Um, instructions are the usual, quite nice actually, the Ravel uh, colour instructions. I'm not going to go through them all, but it's, it's a standard, um, you know, what all the symbols mean. Uh, cut, don't glue, all the rest of it. Um, uh, your paints, what paints you require if you're using the um, Ravel Aqua Series or the uh, the Humbrals. Um, it has a sprue layout and it starts off with you building the um, engine. I don't think it's a full engine, it's just like the front end. Um, it starts up with you building the engine. Um, because it's a turbo, you've got an intercooler, all that sort of thing, all your air intakes, which uh, goes on top of the, the plenum chamber and everything inside. Oh, you do, you've got a gearbox and everything, um, exhaust routing, uh, rear subframe, engine gearbox and all that going together, uh, all your shockies, rear suspension, putting the engine in, drive shafts, um, it doesn't look too bad, anti-roll bars. I don't think it'll be a complicated build. Uh, it'll be complicated more by me trying to put electric in it. Uh, what's quite good is it's an individual... As I say, I've not built a, an actual uh, car kit for over 30 years, so uh, the fact it's got individual door cards opens up options for those of you that want to open doors and things and that up. I won't be opening doors up in this. Um, then we've got the, the dash layout. I'm hoping to backlight these. Hoping to. Uh, we'll see how we'll get on with that. Um, interior, nothing special. Building up all the top for interior. Um, clear parts, a little bit of painting across the top. Um, it looks like it suggests you paint the inside of it black. I'll need to I'll need to go through it, but I mean, I'm not bothered about the colour call-outs just now. Um, Two-part uh, clear parts, uh, the windscreen and the rear section. Um, obviously putting the, the floor pan and the tub into the, the body of the car. And then you've got your rear uh, engine cover and your 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 big wheel tail with the, the air intake on it. Um, top half of the body onto the tub. Wheels look two part. Unfortunately, they look like they're chrome. Um, and you've got the tires. We'll get a look at them in a bit. Uh, wheels and tires on. Good thing for me is it's two part bumpers in that um, for putting lighting and stuff in. So we'll have a look at that. It looks like most of the lighting is. Uh, little separate units, so I might have to do a little bit of scratch building on that. Um, front headlights have a bowl, which is quite handy, which means I'll be able to um, pre-wire those with LEDs, put the, light, uh, the lenses in that, and, and then put them in after it's all painted, so that's good. Also good, um, as I say, I don't know if this is the norm, two individual um, windscreen wipers, which means it's not all moulded in, and it's, it looks a bit better. You've even got a rear wiper as well. Also good, Individual door handles, excellent, rather than being pre-moulded in. Uh, mirrors, yeah, and I think that's it then, it's uh, the, the decal callouts. So, uh, nothing much to the instructions, pretty straightforward. So, let's see what you get in the bags. Right, so you've got some red clear parts. Um, there is, I don't know if you'll make it out, there is Porsche emblazoned into that red part so when I if I manage to light that up um, that'll be quite cool I actually got sent some photos by a tech who works on Porsche on uh, how things all light up in this so that's it it's got red um, plastic parts for the rear lights so there's no need although there is yeah, there's a bit of sinkage on that part which is a bit disappointing that looks like the rear fog light a little bit of sinkage on there which is yeah Typical rebel. A bit, bit disappointing, but it's an 80s kit. So, mm, yeah, not the best of printing. Tires, why, why, why do they do tires like this? Why can't they do them like what Tammy I do um, and have all the injection um, spurs in the inside? So, I'm going to have to take that tab off and this tab off and clean them up. Um, detail wise, yeah, it's a tyre, it's got lots of flash on it, It's they're not great, they're going to need a bit of clean up and that, but yeah, it is what it is, um, yeah, not the best 
tyres wise, um, more plasticky than rubber, uh, vinyl almost, and they're solid. So yeah, not overly impressed with the tyres, but yeah, I'm sure we'll make a good job of that. Right, the tub itself. Right, a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. Um, it's that soft red plastic, um, which is really easy to mark. Um, it has got a slight warpage on the body. Um, so yeah, it's not a perfect mould and it's really, really, yeah, Inspector Gadget. Um, the panel lines and everything for um, in between all the doors are very softly moulded. I think I would be wanting to scribe them out a bit. Um, if you look at a proper door, you will see a physical, um, a deeper line than that. Um, I might be going overboard, but I'm thinking I may want to scribe those out a bit. They are, it's very, very soft um, detail. Um, a few abrasions in that on it. That Oh, sorry about knocking the camera there. Again, that, that just looks like the, the fuel tank's obviously in the front in these. Um, again, it's quite softly moulded. And again, the, the, the panel lines where the the bonnet or the luggage compartment is, it's quite softly moulded. Again, I think I would like to scribe them out, but I think you might actually get to the stage where you're going to scribe those out and actually remove it um, and then place it back in because this is where I'm going to hide the electronics part of it is under here so I'll get a better idea of that when I actually build it and get a look at the tub a little bit of flash here and there uh round about the headlights nothing nothing major but as I say very very soft detail um they've obviously cut them off for the sprues themselves so yeah we better tidy up here now not too bad I think I would be wanting to dress that up and uh micro mesh the full body before I even put primer near it but it's it's not bad it's quite small I mean there's my hand so I've <laughs> I've given myself a task saying I'm going to put lights into this but I'm going to give it a go right what's in L big bag right let's just now I will give them plus points um the clear parts are in a separate bag Yes, well done. So let's get a real look in there and see what the optical clarity is like on these clear parts. Uh, as I say, it's a relatively inexpensive kit at £20, so I'm not expecting anything uh, overly fantastic. Let's get a look at this screen now. There is, I don't know if it's a scratch or just a mark. You can maybe just catch it there. Optical clarity on it's not bad. Unfortunately, where... They have a small uh, drill mark at the top for mounting the mirror. It has deformed and marked the plastic around about it. Um, I'm hoping that has a black line across it because it's a bit... Yeah. Um, optical clarity on the side windows, not that great. It's a bit wavy wobbly. But there you go. So rear screen, it has... Um, Reasonably well moulded uh, lines for the heated rear screen. Uh, it's a bit thicker in places, a little bit rough. Is it a candidate for dipping? I don't think so, but it's the rear screen's reasonably nice. Uh, side windows again, optical clarity on them. It's a bit wrinkly, the dimply, and all that. It looks over thick, over scale, but it's that's kind of typical for your 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 car kits, I would say. Um, then we've got, this looks like front indicators, eh, doesn't look too bad, front indicators and side lights, headlights, at least the sprue gates are in at the side there, and on the ends, and then that looks like a couple of fog lights in the front, so it's not bad, I'm just going to put that back in the bag because I don't want to, to damage uh, the clear parts any worse than they are, they're not bad, um, the, the, the most disappointing part is a bit where the, the, there's a small hole around the top of the screen and it, it's kind of, yeah, it's a bit, a bit rubbish. Right, so let's have a look at the next part which will be getting dipped. Right, I haven't seen a Porsche with a chrome engine or chrome wheels. Um, Tammy are bad for doing this as well, but anyway. So, ha, and apologies as if, if this glares at you guys, but the wheels are all chrome. Um, they haven't undergated them at the sides, so 
even if you wanted to keep that chrome on, um, you're going to have little bits at the side where the chrome is going to come off when you denub it. Um, and it's quite thick chrome as well. So for me, that's going to be getting dipped in bleach. Um, and I will be uh, uh, revisiting that with paints. Now, the mirrors, again, ghastly. Uh, I don't know if you can see on there, but you would think they would be mirror smooth. They're not. I might actually... Uh, will I smooth that back and try and put a chrome effect on, or will I leave it as it is? Again, it's not undergated. Um, so you're going to have a little bit at the edge of the mirror. It depends how far it sits into the mirror housing. Uh, it might get away with cleaning it up around the edges and putting it in. I might leave those be might. Now... Uh, why, why, again, not undergating on the headlights? Um, not undergated in the slightest. It's The, the sprue gates are directly uh, onto the side of the headlights, which means even if you wanted to keep that lovely chrome, um, you're not going to be able to. I think what I might do with that, rather than dip those totally in bleach, uh, bearing in, in mind I'm going to put a tiny little um, surface mount LEDs in there, is that uh, when I remove it from the sprue, um, I may sand back the outer edge and keep the inner chrome and repaint um, the outer bezels. Again, gearboxes on these were aluminium. They weren't chrome. Uh, so that's going to go and bleach and get dipped. Uh, this looks like the top of the bank of the, the flat six, uh, horizontally opposed uh, flat six, which is traditional, of course. They aren't chrome, uh, so that's all going to come off. And then you've got the front uh, pulley system, the front part of the, the block and everything like that. Yeah, that... So basically, apart from possibly the mirrors and uh, the internal part of the bezels, all the chrome's going to come off this. I would advise that because it just looks... It looks a bit gash. And uh, when an, an engine is actually made of aluminium and it isn't chrome... I wish they would actually just not put the chrome on and then it saves you a, a step. But there we go. Uh, so the chrome parts. What's the quality of the chrome like? It's actually... It's not bad. If it had been undergated, um, undergating is where instead of going directly onto the side... Sorry, I'll take out the bag so it's not glaring. Where it goes directly onto the side and when you cut it, you're going to have a nub. The, it goes under a part that's not seen. So you cut it off for the back. So all the visible part would still be chromed and the, the little nub would be out of sight and unfortunately mind you it's an older kit so undergating is maybe a newer thing but yeah undergating all manufacturers should undergate their parts so let's have a look at the next sprue right so do they label their sprues anything in particular no so what have we got here we've got the main tub um Nice little bit of detail on the underneath. Uh, yeah, so it's not a proper engine as such. They're sort of hinting at that's a sump pan. Uh, obviously, you when you look up the side of an engine, you would see a visible gap. Um, so they've kind of hinted at a sump pan. They've kind of hinted at a, an oil cooler there with the pipes coming off. Um, but it's yeah, it's just raised detail. It's just a suggestion of it's It's nothing like the real car. Um little bit of suggestions of some floor detail. That's quite nice. Um, wee bits of flash here and there. Nothing that, that can't be handled. Um, and just a, a pretty standard looking tub. Um, it looks pretty square. You know, it's, it's not bad. Um, let's just try that on top of there to see what... You're not going to have any major problems when... Uh, obviously, I've not cut everything off. But you're not going to have any major problems when that goes together, so... Yeah, it's not bad. Bit of clean up. Uh, the well tail. Uh, good. All the ejector pin marks appear to be on the underneath, uh, which is good because that's a bit you don't see. And on the top half, it appears reasonably well moulded. Um, I can't see any sink marks. It'll need a little bit of clean up. That's fair enough. Don't mind that. Now, this looks like the rear parcel shelf. Um, it has got a couple of indents in there, but they're possibly supposed to be there. It's got a slight texture to it. Uh, whether I'm going to flock 
That's F L O C K. Uh, I've I haven't got any grey at the moment. I've got black. Um, this stuff you get. Um, Get it for Hero Boy. Uh, a lot of tubs of this flocking powder for doing carpets and everything. So I'm going to need to get some grey because it's like almost like German battleship grey inside there. So uh, yeah, I'll need to get myself some grey flock uh, for doing all the carpet and the flooring. Um, seats, Recaro like. Um, they're not bad for moulding. Um, I'll need to see. I think they're just all grey. So I don't know if there's any pinstriping on it. They're reasonably well moulded. A wee bit rough around about the edges. Um, again, any ejector pin marks or, or tooling marks are all on the underneath, which is good. And there are quite a lot of tooling marks and ejector pin marks on the underneath. Um, we have the centre console. Um, again, soft detail. Uh, four little knobs or whatever on there. It'll need a little bit of clean up. No sink marks though, which is good. Um, and it seems reasonably well cast. Handbrake has got a nice seam line down the middle, which will need addressed, but that's not a problem. Um, this looks like the top plenum chambers um, that the air goes in. Um, or is it the... Oh, it's actually it's exhaust. It's the collector boxes uh, and going out to the pipes um, for exhaust. Little bit of uh, clean-up required, a little bit of flash, but nothing they can't handle. And luckily it hasn't been chromed, so we'll be able to get a nice metallic colour on it. And there's... Uh, it looks like another exhaust. Uh, this also looks. This looks like fuel injection side of things. It looks like a fuel injection pump. Um, bit small for actually. I don't know if there's going to be any injector detail on it. I'll need to have a look when I get the chrome off the engine. It would be nice to run. I believe this would be a Bosch pump. It would be nice to run little. It would have to be really really fine wire little injector um, wires out. But I can I can have a look at that. A bit of scratch building. A wee bit of detail. Uh, again, I'll need to look at the spark plug side of it. I'll, I'll look at some reference photos. That's uh, steering column. So, oh no, not too bad actually. Not bad at all. Uh, oh. Ah, right, okay. So, I've, yeah, all right. So, the rear seats as well are also. Oh no, this is the back of the seats. Right, Derek, get your brain in gear. As I say, I've not done a car kit for ages. So, this is the. The other half of the front seats. So they are reasonably well moulded. There doesn't appear to be any sink lines or anything on them. And any tooling marks are all on the inside on the part that's it's, it's not going to be visible. So that's really good. Uh, we've got the tub. Um, now I do notice a couple of... Let's just get a pointy stick. Um, I do notice a couple of ejector pin marks there. Um, I'm hoping there's a, a back of a seat or something that would go in there and hide those. I'm not sure. There's a slot there and a slot there. So I haven't read the instructions yet. So I'm hoping they get covered up because I'll be a little bit fiddly to clean them up. A uh, couple of ejector pin marks there under the seats. Uh, it does have a textured base um, if you're just wanting to paint it. Again, a couple of horrible ejector pin marks. Now, I'm going to be uh, flocking this. So the only thing is I need to try and get these ejector pin marks away before I flock it. Uh, foot pedals, yeah, again, soft detail um, cast into the, the tub itself. It's all right. Um, no major, there's a bit of a sink mark there, but it's it's nicely textured on the inside. That's obviously where your door cards go. So let's have a look at the door cards. Uh, door cards, uh, it's probably got a Bose speaker system in it at that age or... Something along that lines. A uh, couple of speakers. That's sort of te slightly textured. It's quite nice actually. It's quite nicely moulded. Um, wee bit of clean up here and there. The wee electric switch. That's either. It's probably for the windows. Not bad. The door cards aren't bad at all actually. Now what's on the bottom of there? GL3 Zong Shan. Copyright 1989. So it was 89 that this was tooled. Um, that's not bad. What else have we got in there? We have, right, this is a bit, ra this seems, appears to have been stressed in packaging. It's supposed to sit like that. So this is the rear, um, engine cover. A bit of flash up the side. Reasonably well, uh, cast turbo, uh, embossed on it. So you'll be able to get a, 
possibly a wee bit dry brushing across that, unless there's a decal goes across the top of it. A wee bit flashy in there. Not too bad, but the way because it's the way it's been cast, there is some stress stressing on the sprue there. Uh, this is one of the bumpers. I would assume it's the front. Again, reasonably well cast. Um, a little bit of clean up here and there. Nothing, nothing really bad about that. All ejector pin marks are on the underside. And the same with the boot, which obviously if you're going to have that opening up, you're going to have to address, address that. The shocks are lacking a lot of detail. They're pretty basic. They're not very crisp. And there is a nice... Uh, seam line up it and the same with the front wiper blades um yeah they're a little bit flashy they're going to be a bit fiddly to clean up but they are what they are they're all right uh i think this is a two-part front bumper so we have the lower uh what we call the splitter where the fog lights go in this is where i will have to do a little bit of modification to get an led in there i may have to build um a little box at the back to house the LED, but that's that's that'll be covered in the build series. Um, and this looks like the is it the the back the main back bit? It's reasonably well moulded. A little bit of clean up, nothing too disappointing there. So that's fine. And the last sprue. What do we have here? Right. Oh, we've got more wiper blades. Got a steering rack, which is more of a suggestion of a steering rack not a lot of detail in it really, but the rubber gaiters and yeah again softly molded just to sort of suggest that it's a steering rack uh, this looks like inner engine parts that's obviously uh, for intercooler or oil cooler something like that oh no, no yeah that looks yeah airbox it's probably the airbox uh, rear sub uh Suspension, again, not much detail on it. It's a little bit flashy, not too bad. Uh, a few ejector pin marks on the interior side that you're not really going to see. Um, not too bad. It looks like, and as I say, I haven't read the instructions yet, it looks like there's a slight taper and then a line on there. So I'm wondering if the wheels just click over that. So that'll be interesting to see how good the interference fit is on that when, when the build goes ahead. Um, <clears throat> if I remember in a car of this age, it would be drum brakes. Um, so we've got all the drums sitting there. Nothing special about them. They are just round discs uh, simulating uh, brake drums. Um, yeah, we've got a uh, couple of drive shafts. Again, softly moulded detail. Uh, seam lines all the way up them to need to get taken care of. Same with the gear stick. It's a bit flashy. Seam line all the way up it. Um, a couple of wee louvers there that will probably be for air intakes or something like that. Again, a little bit flashy. Nothing that can't be taken care of. Looks like a number plate. Door handles. There. Wee bit of seam lines on them. So yeah, just be careful when you're cleaning those up. Same with the, the door mirrors. They've got bit flash on seam lines on them and front suspension the mcpherson struts uh again it's it's soft detail and again it's got that taper and that line so i'm assuming that it, it clicks on so what do i think of it it looks a nice little kit uh i'll need a little bit of work but it's a nice little kit tires are a bit disappointing however and the fact that it's not undergated on the chrome is a little bit disappointing and but overall, it's a not bad kit, and, and the deformation round about the, the hole for the rear view mirror, again, a little bit disappointing. Whether that will be disguised um, when the painting and that all goes on for um, the window robbers and stuff, I don't know uh, whether that will be seen or not. So, uh, it's a suck it and see. Overall, quite a nice little kit. As I say, I'm hoping to light this up and put LEDs in it. I'm going to do a, a build video series on it. So that's going to be a new one for this year. I haven't got an ETA when I'm going to start it. But I'm quite looking forward to it. Uh, I won't, I'm going to be doing it in the red uh, and the black contrast. But I'm not going to be 2K in it. But I, I'm going to be using lacquers on it. So yeah, build video series plan for it. So I've probably waffled on long enough. Uh, half an hour on the kit. Um, good kit for, for 20 quid. Um, we'll, we'll see if I still feel that way when I actually start going to put it all together. So, yeah, big thumbs up for me. Um, 
nice little kit, uh, inexpensive. Um, but yeah, didn't put chrome on kits, guys. Yeah, I just, yeah, just doesn't it? If you can make it look like chrome, yeah. <laughs> and the tires. <laughs> So, yeah, that's uh, it's been a little uh, inbox review, as I say, of Ravel's uh, Level 4 kit um, Porsche 911 Turbo. Um, so, yeah, if you want to follow along with the build series when it comes out, yeah, it's worth grabbing one. If you haven't done a car, uh, I have done a car, but it's, it was that wee Beetle thing. Um, yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and do a video build series on it, um, mostly because I'm going to try and, and actually have working headlights. Uh, working indicators, uh, working front spots, and uh, possibly uh, backlight uh, the the, um, the dash on it. So yeah, um, hopefully uh, a wee link will pop up. But if I don't manage to do it in, in post edit or I forget, um, in the description down below, uh, feel free to support me on Patreon if you wish. You don't have to. Uh, to your start from a dollar a month. Uh, I'm currently not working due to my health, so. Uh, Every little bit helps um, support the channel. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, lots of links how you can follow me on Facebook and that. I'm still trying to get up to 1,000 subscribers at the at the current time of uh, filming this. So uh, do feel free to subscribe. Click the little bell icon so you'll be uh, notified when um, the next uh, update comes up or, or build or whatever. And until the next time, look after yourselves, enjoy your hobby, Happy modeling. Bye.